things to lose to the Suns. Yeah, no, that's what it comes down to. So we'll, let's um, let's do a few minutes on the the game, and then just <laughs> the plan picture is by far the most interesting thing to get into. So yeah. we'll do do more of that. Copy. Um, cool, cool, cool. Let me get let me get the bills in place. Are we live? Are we live on YouTube? Oh, we are live. We are live. All right. Presented by Prize Picks. One hundred dollar match on your first deposit with the promo code Light Years. Welcome to Light Years. There you go. Your one hundred dollar match right there. Your one hundred dollar match. You put a hundred dollars in. Prize Picks like here's another hundred for you. And just start winning. You know, I'm up right now. So, welcome to Light Years. Aaron, it was not a pretty night for the Warriors. No. And I should I should say, sitting in for a guy, Andy, I got Aaron Larsoul across from me. It was not a pretty night for the Warriors, but it was a productive night for the Warriors. I think everything is played correctly for the Warriors, not just the results of the Blazers game, but results across the league. And you know what? <laughs> they can't all be pretty. I'll take it the way. Yeah. They yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, this is what you want, right? If uh, you want, you want the Kings to fall back um, and then uh, their next game is against the Suns. And so if the Suns who still have something to play for because the Pelicans won, uh, if the Suns are able to handle the, the Kings, then the seven, eight matchup is in play and mm -hmm. the ability to avoid Denver in the first round, which is really the, uh the key there yeah i mean it was ugly um it looked like the guys were focused on tomorrow against the pelicans um correct and yeah. the team will said right like the team the, the team told on itself sitting draymond and and clay and, and gp2 so sure. it really looked like everybody was focused on tomorrow uh steph looked like he was kind of going through the motions for most of the night so but again like a win is a win is a win um, and, and you're and we're getting to it right now. The Sacramento Kings lose to the New Orleans Pelicans, setting up a three way tie between the Kings, Warriors, and Lakers record wise right now. Mm -hmm. We got a little Warriors Pelicans tomorrow. We also got a little Kings Suns tomorrow. Uh, and on the other side of that matchup, both those teams are playing for who's going to make the plan and who's not going to make the plan. So I would expect all teams across the board to go playoff rotations in that game. In that Agree. Game. And then it's, I mean, the Lakers have a gimme in Memphis, although the Warriors, <laughs> it was a gimme tonight in, sure. in Memphis and then finish the season with, with the Pelicans. So shout out to the schedule makers who have all of these teams playing each other to end the season to decide it on the court. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I, it could not have played out better for the Warriors tonight because they have a very realistic shot at getting into that 7-8 game now. Yeah. Uh, they still need help. They still need help from the Phoenix Suns to beat the Sacramento Kings. They would also need to take care of business against the Pelicans and uh, obviously not trick away the last game against Utah. But, <laughs> but it seems a little dicier after tonight, right? Yeah, exactly. But, but you know what? It's... It, it's in the cards right now, which, you know, a week ago, you wouldn't have said so. And yeah. so cautious optimism, things are playing their favor. I think if you also, if you looked at it, it take away how they look tonight, even though it was terrible, they still won. Mm -hmm. That's 26 and 11 over the last 37 for the Warriors. Uh, and Sacramento, who's technically at the tiebreaker over them, not technically, they just do. Uh, they look the opposite. They look like a team who is holding on for dear life. Yeah, they're taking the off, going the opposite direction. Maybe some of its injuries, you know, losing Herder and Malik Monk, but they do not look like last year's Kings to me. They look like they're trending the complete opposite well, way. I, I have a little pushback. Mm -hmm. I mean, they kind of do look like last year's Kings, and they're probably going to finish with as good or better of a record. It's just the Western Conference is, is so much better that – and to be fair, they were they were as healthy as anyone has ever been sure. uh, last year. But you, know, you for for everybody watching on hanging out with us on playback or watching on YouTube, 
you can see the last 10, the, the Warriors are nine and one in their last 10 and the Kings are four and six. So the, the Warriors have been able to make up five games to, to tie the Kings. Uh, obviously the Kings still have the tiebreaker, but yeah. I, I think that's, that's kind of what's wild about all of this is I, I think the Kings, I think the Warriors are better than they were last year. I think the Lakers are better than they were last year. I think the Kings are about the same um, and their record is going to be, but they were the three seed last year and are going to be, the eight seed, the nine seed this year. How important do you think it is for the Warriors to get that seven eight seed? To get in the seven eight game. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I think it is really important, and the reason I think it is really important is because I think the Warriors are somewhere between can beat anyone, or maybe I would pick them against anyone other than the Nuggets. And right now, it looks like the Nuggets are going to get. Yeah, obviously, the two chances to win one game matters also. Sure. But I think the I think the biggest benefit of the 7-8 game as it relates to this season is avoiding the Nuggets. Yeah, no, I, I'd agree with you there. Uh, Minnesota's had an excellent season, but until I see them do what Denver did last playoffs, like I, I'm not going to give them that level of respect. Uh, and yeah, it, Let's get, honestly, I, I like the Warriors' chances against a, a Minnesota team if they get there. You know, oh, I do too. Or OKC. Yeah, yeah. Because they're tied. The two of them are tied. You know, mm -hmm. two and three. Yeah, I'd agree. But but let's stick to the picture here. Um, this is this is again very interesting for the Warriors. I mean, do you? They got the Pelicans tomorrow night. It did feel like they were looking ahead tonight. It did really feel very like much so. Ahead. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like Bi is not going to play tomorrow and is is going to play wait until the uh, the last game of the season to play. Mm -hmm. Zion uh, was out for a little bit today with a it looked like a wrist thing, although he came back and, and played pretty well. Uh, CJ McCollum <laughs> made a million threes, so I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see who has obviously playing at home. You would think theoretically would help the Warriors, although the Warriors have farther to travel to uh to san francisco than than the pelicans do you would think it's been a home game would be beneficial for the back-to-back -back. however the warriors have clearly been better on the road than they they have been at home i i just if the warriors were looking ahead to tomorrow then you have to pay it off with the full effort and let's get let's see what what you know sitting gp2 and draymond and clay does for their legs and their wind and for draymond's force of will let's call it yeah uh, so I mean, yeah I, I i look i think i think the warriors i haven't looked at any any lines yet but i think the warriors probably should be favored tomorrow yeah it is at home they sat some key veterans who we you know are a little banged up uh but let's put it this way if this was a uh if the pelicans were playing on the front end i don't think those guys would be sitting i'll put that agree way. yeah agree so um okay let's let's pay a bill real quick and then we're gonna get to tonight's whatever the hell you want to call tonight's game <laughs> you can now win up to 100 extra money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks you can turn ten dollars into one thousand dollars on nba nhl whatever it may be on prize picks america's number one fantasy app whether it's tournament season or a fight for the playoff home court, definitely play for playoff home court. There's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this year to get on your excitement with prize picks. America's number one fantasy sports app. Turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. You guys know I play this all the time. Yeah. Steph has made me a lot of money over the years and he's made me like eight times as much money playing lines this season. I know when he's tired. I know when I should maybe play another player. And I know when he's got that look in his eyes and I should put it all on number 30. And you know, when he's got that look in his eyes, I'm always going to put it all on number 30. So download the app today. Use the promo code LIGHTYEARS for your first deposit. Match up to $100. That's right. You put 100 in, prize picks will put an additional 100 in for you with the promo code LIGHTYEARS. All right, let's talk about tonight's game a little bit, okay? Okay, yep. The 
I mean, just uh, let, let's start with the the overarching take on it, which was the most predictable trap game of all time. The Warriors <laughs> came out flat. At some point in the fourth quarter, I want to say at the eight-minute mark, I was like, oh, no, they're going to lose. They're going to lose. But this is not last year's Warriors team. They were able to tighten up enough. And I want to start with giving credit to Looney. Looney was the improbable hero of the game for me tonight. Yeah, Looney was the player who – came in and was like, guys, enough of this bullshit. You know, Steve Curry gave Dario Saric a run in the first yes, half. Yes, he did. Right? Like, that. that's where I knew when Saric came in, I was like, oh, this dude's searching right now. He's searching for anyone to give minutes because they came out completely unserious across the board. And it turned out to be Looney would be the one, made some key defensive plays down the stretch and really was kind of the, the main guy for them. Play. I, I don't really know how to discuss it because part of me is disgusted yeah. that they would play with their food with this much on the line. And the other part of me is like, I get it. You're sitting three of your key guys with your eyes on the, the game tomorrow. And you're playing against a bunch of dudes who are playing for contracts. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. Who, who on that Blazers team, aside from Scoot and DeAndre Ayton, knows they're going to be in the NBA next year? Uh, none of them. Um, yeah. But <laughs> going along with that, you're right. I mean, these are like, these aren't even real like G League guys. These are like backup G League guys that that Portland's playing. Um, and so it's you're like right. that. It's like that Netflix show. What was it? Um, the, oh, like, uh, was, yeah, somebody getting a ch- last chance. You, yeah, last no. chance. You, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, uh, so I mean, you're right. But when I was watching the game, especially defensively. Uh, the Blazers were so discombobulated and just had no idea what to do with Steph that there were so many wide open looks that the Warriors just flubbed like that. That was the the scary part for me. It wasn't that because you're going to get, you know, to your point, guys playing for for contracts, you're generally going to get more effort than a Warriors sure. team that is looking forward to tomorrow. Um, but I like the Warriors ran kind of mediocre offense and we're getting whatever they wanted and weren't looking for Steph enough. And then Steph, you know, not didn't really put his foot on the gas until the fourth quarter. So that was kind of the strange part to me was like, yeah, you're going to get extra effort from, from guys that are not, you know, solid NBA guys that are playing for a contract to your point, but they didn't, the Blazers didn't even play well. That was, that was like kind of the, the, yeah. the frustrating, weird, scary part to me. The concerning, I guess is what I would, uh what i would turn it but but to your point like i think i think loon the effort that he came with in in particularly the fourth quarter yeah. um kind of turned the game like turned the game around and gave the warriors some life so i feel like the the most interesting part of this game is kuminga and trace jackson davis mm-hmm. and i don't really know what to take from it because the fir- kuminga was a train wreck the first half he was not great turnovers all over the place more important than the turnovers he and wiggins have this propensity to come out like it's a summer league run you know like i I don't know how else to describe it they come out with this like just a lack the exact lack of effort that like is why steve kerr would bench kuminga all the time right like no focus on anything other than if the ball's in my hands, that sort of thing. It did get better in the second half of the game. It did. But I'm watching this, this and I'm just wondering if like when the games get more serious and obviously Draymond's going to be in there, and he should because he's one of the best players, is Kuminga going to end up getting squeezed out of the playoff rotation for Trey Saxon Davis? Because that's what it looks like. to like he's, he's more talented. Yeah. He's definitely a better scorer. Yeah, you can get to the rim at will, um, but Trace is so much more focused on doing the little things. It's just you know, what, whether it's like just boxing out or you know running hard on every possession, mm-hmm. like that sort of yep. thing. It's like yep. I can I can just see exactly where this is going in the playoffs, and it's tough because they need Kuminga. They need the best version of Kuminga to be a viable playoff team who can get past a couple teams, but also he can't have, they can't have both him and Wiggins 
being kind of like, are they going to have energy tonight? Is this going to like they, they need it's ironic because like pods and trace aren't nearly as gifted as those guys, but at no point do you ever worry about those guys energy. And, and what yeah. they need is like those guys heads inside of Kuman. <laughs> you know, you know, I, this felt like confirmation to me um, because one of the big storylines uh, from, you know, the first half of the year or so, mm -hmm. I mean, basically until the second Draymond, when Draymond came back from the second suspension and then, started you know it was a couple games he was coming off the bench and then he started starting um and that was the first time that the Kaminga and Wiggins pairing worked and right. so tried it again tonight Kaminga's been out for for a while tried it again tonight without Draymond and you're right it just didn't it didn't work again you know like Kaminga's numbers were okay this like the stats are okay they look damn good on was, paper. It's, it's yeah, a it was, classic. Like if you didn't watch the game, you'd be like, what are you talking about? He was plus eight, 19 and six, seven for 11. He played well, but. If... Right. So I, I, this really felt to me like, and maybe it's like some mojo or juju, or maybe it is something like X's and O's related. Although I doesn't feel like that to me defensively, maybe that Draymond really is the key that unlocks specifically of the lineup with those two but maybe all of yeah. this yeah yeah, yeah i mean felt it, like it just felt like confirmation of that yeah it's like 50 percent. if you've ever watched a warrior game in person you'll notice draymond's telling everyone what to do at all times uh and it, that really is one of those things that pops in person more than on tv because you yeah. can hear it yeah you can see the pointing uh the camera doesn't always catch all the stuff and that's not to say other players don't know what they're doing, but like being able to call it out in real time, he's like, he's like Ray Lewis in his prime in terms of just like reading a defense and or reading an offense and figuring out what they'll do. And so that, that helps uh, a ton. Another way. The, the other way is like offensively, he's a, he takes a ball out of their hands and kind of turns them more into athletes, which is yeah. what they are at their best. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's like, you get the ball. There's less, there's less Kaminga and Wiggins off there's the bounce just, themselves. Yeah. I guess it's both of them. Yeah. It, it's he just both makes it so they have to think less. Yep. Literally, they can just they can just play. They don't have to think as much on defense. He he like basically tells them where to go. And on offense, they can run the court and like, come on, man. You get those guys in space going downhill, like no one's stopping it. Or you know, so. a lot of Kaminga in the uh, in the dunker spot, you know, playing with, with Dre playing four and three pocket pass. Exactly. Lob. Yeah. You're, yeah, that's a good point. It is. He so, does. He does. He takes the. Uh, he make. I guess he makes the game more automatic, where they can just use their talent as opposed to having having to figure out ways to to affect the game. Yeah, and you can always say like, you know, oh well, what if they simplify the way they play? And it's not changing. They're, they're not, not the Warriors. <laughs> yeah, they're they're playing the way they do. So I, he's such a necessary piece to everything they do, and. In some ways, I still feel like that downplays his impact. It makes it sound like all he is is a coach on the floor, like he isn't making impact plays all over the place. But yeah, yeah right. to your point, like one of the best it's three always, defensive players on planet Earth. It, it, the best way to describe Draymond is just watch him play without him. You'll notice yeah. what's missing. You'll notice what's missing the entire way. Um, Do you think so? Let's assume, well, tomorrow. Yeah, we, we can start with tomorrow, but then call it the playing game. The Draymond Kaminga Wiggins, it was Pods and Steph, and then and then Clay recently replaced Pods and has played well. Mm -hmm. But then now TJD has been starting. Also, where do you think when the chips are actually down? Where do you think Steve settles? I think Steve's going gut. I think it's going to be whoever is rolling a little more that night between Trace and JK. But it's going to be less about scoring and more about who's, you know, getting their nose in there, who's getting dirty, who's doing those things. And so if you were to ask me, I think it's going to be Trace. I really do. Like, I, I think that's the way he's going to go. I also think we're going to see more pods than some people want to see in the playoffs because it means they'll be very undersized. But – you we can just pods. assume we can just assume for no good reason that Moses Moody will be back not playing, right? 
Oh, I think Moses might get in there too, to be honest. Oh, all right. I like that. There's no reason he shouldn't. I mean, he's it's the same thing as Trace. He's willing to he's willing to, yeah. you know, stick his nose in there. He is get dirty. And he can hit a shot. His shot's been too inconsistent this year to stay in the rotation. Like part of me gets so frustrated, he doesn't play more. And then the other part of me looks at it as like, dude, what is he, 32% from three on the year? Like I mean, didn't he didn't he miss like 14 and 12 or 14 in a row? Which which I mean he doesn't have a ton of volume. So if you miss 12 or 14 well, it's, it's in a row, such a chicken, it. it's such a chicken or the egg thing where you're just like he has to hit shots. Well, it's hard to hit shots if you don't get to play and yeah, every missed yeah. shot you get pulled. So yeah. That's kind of where we're at with Moses Moody, but I wouldn't be. I mean, Steve didn't play played Anthony Lamb over him all of last year, and then went to Moses Moody in the playoffs, and it worked, and it was the correct call. I'm not, you know, I mean, didn't he? He Moses didn't play like the year before the title season. He basically didn't play, and then all of a sudden was starting games in the Western Conference Finals in the Dallas series. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be a little more controversial if he doesn't play uh kuminga in some of these games just because kuminga's had such a breakout year in many ways Mm -hmm. and he is what their most second or third most effortless score like it he most effortless score oh that's a good question um I mean, Steph's Steph. So yeah, but I know they're most. I think Wiggins is the most effortless scorer. He just it just doesn't go in very often. Sure. I I, I mean, he puts yeah, pressure. No, yes. on, I guess he puts pressure on the rim. He's gonna if he gets thirty minutes. It's very rare you see Kuminga not walk away with like eighteen. Yeah. Or more. Yeah, and, he and also, it doesn't he even does feel like the Warriors can't do otherwise. Right. He gets he a rim at well. Can't. Yeah. Basically. So. I don't know. It, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but you know, his absence with the knee thing got Trace in there. They play so well with Trace. Yeah. Uh, and it, it kind of puts them in a spot where, you know, Steve, more than anything, Steve has to read everything in real time and make quick adjustments, which has not always been his strength. He likes to have his guys, right? Like that's his, he likes to have his, his guys and this is my lineup i go to when the chips are on the table and yeah. that's not the roster this team is it's just not the roster this team is like steph is that guy draymond is that guy clay's not even that guy every time now you know not like anymore. recently he is but it's kind of like you have steph and draymond and which three of the seven guys that we love in our rotation are the ones we want to play tonight do you think there is uh you know, you've got you've got Sam sources, obviously. <laughs> Do you is there anything coming out of the team or the bay or whatever that obviously but whatever a couple months ago Kaminga had uh, had that heart to heart with Steve and you know started started getting more minutes after that and was starting and playing well. He, bull- he bullied his way into the starting line. Yeah, we but now to, he's not starting we to, anymore. We have to tip our cap. No, I yeah, and good for him <laughs> because he should have been, right? But now he's probably not starting anymore. Do you think nah, there's any friction from that? Nah. The, no. Like, they're in a playoff run. They're, he came back two games ago, and Trace is playing really well. And more than anything, Kuminga's is getting heavy minutes. I think I think the what causes friction or what caused friction was uh, him getting kind of rope-a-doped between one game, you're in the rotation, yeah. you play well, and yeah. then the next you're not, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's 20 to 30 – starting or off the bench that's okay and also you know how players get this time of year they all want to play but there's like this like collective it's playoff time right it's it's a, there's a yeah, little yeah, less it's go time yeah yeah it's a, there's a little less like oh i should be getting more touches right now you know that's more of a january thing so it's fair he could have had all of dario's arch minutes today too yeah i mean look i get why dario was in there I, I don't disagree with the move, but it didn't pay off. So, <laughs> all right. Um, let's get to one more ad here, and then we'll get to the goons. Love it. How's that sound? How's that sound for everyone? Curious what people have to think about the playoffs right now. I know this game was not super, like, it, it didn't instill a ton of confidence. Mm-mm. 
for for you to go like, okay, now I'm buying into this team. But you got every result you wanted. You got everything you needed. And you know what? Sometimes you got to win ugly and sometimes you got to move on to the next one. So, guys, I want to tell you about Factor. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose this week's menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, Vegan, and Veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get a chef-prepared meal on the table in two minutes with Factor's ready-to-go meals. Guys, head to Factor Meals. That's factormeals.com slash lightyears50 and use the promo code lightyears50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code lightyears50, five zero at factormeals.com slash lightyears50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next box after that. I will say as someone who perennially never has enough time in the day and but is picky with their food, you can't do worse than factor. Like it's first off 50% off. It's basically free. Give it a test. If you do not like it afterwards, troll me, tell me I'm full. Of it. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying right now. I I'm putting my name on the line here. So I'll you just, got some, fa- like, you got some faves. You got some faves. You're going to share with the group. I actually, so I, I I'm not on any specific diet, but like mm-hmm. their, their keto menu is, And the protein plus one, like hit the sweet spot of what I want in a meal in terms of like kind of protein heavy, more than anything, limiting the BS in the meal, Mm -hmm. which is like Mm -hmm. always my issue because the BS tastes good. (laughs) (laughs) Like, so I'm trying to get delicious filler. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to get something that like gives me kind of the, the right amount of, of calories and, and, the stuff I want to eat, but yeah. also doesn't feel like a chore food wise. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're going to get to the goons, guys. Let's get it. Factormeals.com backslash light years 50. Hello, hello. E- Ebony, what's up? I, I saw you getting a little concerned mid game and ready to blame the light years podcast, but did we not come through? You did, you did. So oh, was there was, was there an Ebony Twitter rant? Was there a little something? <laughs> oh, I was practically in tears, man. I was like, they're going to blow it. I was too optimistic. I was ready to cry into my pillow for the rest of the fourth quarter. It was it was terrible. But um, anyways, my question is about JK. You're watching him turn the ball over, you know, for – pretty much two quarters straight and it's the most painful thing and you got to take your hats off to him for you know what he did this whole season and you know be proud of that and you know look to the future with it at the same time you can't bench him the entire playoffs because he needs the experience so I guess my question is how does Kerr decide to use him in the playoffs? My thought is that, you know, towards the end of a game, if they just need someone to get to the rack, they throw him in there for like the last, you know, for maybe like three, four minutes in the fourth quarter. But they they can't, like his usage could not be that high considering his turnover rate. Um, I'd rather see like pods in those minutes, which sounds ridiculous for a rookie, but you know, the turnovers are going to kill us, but if he's going to get to the rack for the free throws and he's above 70% on those free throws, why not? So that's kind of my question in terms of what do you do with JK who can't dribble (laughs) unless he's like the only, you know, the only ball handler, quote unquote. It's a fair question. It's a good call. Appreciate mm-hmm. you, Ebony. Yeah. I I keep going back to my – they're going to have to play matchups. They're going to have to play matchups more than they've ever had to in the past. 
Um, it goes back to your earlier point about not having a starting or closing lineup settled it's, it's, on, right? It's not yeah. 2017. You don't know that you're closing with Steph, Clay, Iguodala, KD, and Draymond, you know? And, and that's like the greatest closing lineup you're ever going to get. They're, they have two guys who will close in every situation and then six guys who are all like solid and you got to play the matchup a little bit, right? Uh, and, and I see Paratosh in the chat going, we have the perfect coach to play like that. So oh, glad. Oh, uh, but it's fair. Steve you know, I think to, Steve I think, to do it before. I think that um, Kaminga has been good enough this year that he has earned a rotation spot yeah. um, in the playoffs, whether that's a rotation spot where he plays 17 minutes or 34 minutes. I think is dependent on, to her point, well, his turnovers and how he's playing. Let, I do think he's earned. I do think he's earned a rotation spot, though. Let's talk through the minutes. Let's talk through some of the matchups. Like the Pelicans, is that a team you want to go with the uh, switch heavy defense and a little more Kuminga, Draymond at the five? So I think well, Valanciunas on the offensive glass is terrifying, but. I th- but I run him off the floor. Yeah, Tends right. Always be the warrior on the other like, side. Correct. Yeah, and so. I think that I think you do want the bodies, um, and I think Kaminga is going to be part of that brigade that you're going to want to throw at at Zion. And look, part of this, not so much for tomorrow, but if that is a play in matchup, is whether Bi is available or not. Um, I think I think Kaminga is because that is a that is a young and athletic group in in New Orleans, and I think you're going to need Kaminga in those matchups. Yeah, and then you know, looking ahead, let's say they get lucky and they play Minnesota in the playoffs. You could argue hmm. that's not a trace series. Yeah, you're going to need him, but any time you play quote unquote big, you're playing to Minnesota's hand. You're gonna to want to go the opposite way, so uh, I think it goes. I think it goes both ways on matchups with them in general. I think he's gonna get more than enough opportunities here. I would be shocked if Steve benched him the way he did last year. Well, like I think he's gonna be in the mix a little bit. I think you're correct. Yeah. It's gonna be a little bit of a could be 15, could be 35, depending on the match, depending on a bunch of factors, but performance being well. So nature. here's the thing, and this was I think the first part of Ebony's question was about what do you do because he's, you know, turning the ball over and he has his foibles and and issues, but he needs the experience. And right. That's kind of been, that's been the question the last two years. Sure. That was also the Moses Moody question. That was the James Wiseman question is that sometimes guy, and you probably don't want to do this in the playoffs, but it's the question of getting guys on the floor so they can get the experience to pay dividends, you know, down the road versus are these guys helping us win now? Maybe not. So I don't know if you want to do that in the playoffs, but yeah. I do think Kaminga has earned a rotation spot. I think I think in the playoffs, all that stuff goes away. It's it's kind of like these are our eight to nine guys, and you know what? Like <laughs> if you're not performing by game four, you're twenty minutes a game is down to five, and by game seven, you're on you're on DNP. You know, yeah, yes. all all that stuff goes out the window in the playoffs. Um, it is what it is. It's, it's how <laughs> I like. I, they talk about how they were inspired by the Miami Heat last year. The Miami, yeah, Heat, Clay. I saw that Clay quote. Yeah, Miami Heat had one series. Duncan Robinson's a hero. The next series, he's out of the rotation. It's not an easy way to play. It's no, not an easy it's way. Not to sustainable. Play no, it's tough. Uh, but if Caleb, really Caleb Martin and <laughs> Caleb Martin and Gabe Vincent both turning into Steph for like two sure. and a half weeks is not that's not going to work long. It takes it, it takes a lot of mental toughness. It to, is the chat is saying it's the East too, which is a good point. It is. It yeah. is. The, it, it is the. Uh, it is the East. It is the the New York Knicks and the Milwaukee Bucks are not the uh, you know Lakers, Nuggets, whatever it may be. So anyway. Um, Abdul, what's up? Hey, man, how's it going? That's good. How you? How you doing? I'm good. I thankfully was out, and so I missed the first half of the game, which I feel like you, was a gift. You've, you've seen it. You've seen this. Yeah, game. yeah. So I saw the second half. 
Good for like, your mental health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still the second half was also terrible. But um, I, honestly, I don't even know if I have a question. I wanted to take a moment. I know Looney made some clutch plays towards the uh, end of the game. But I wanted to say something that might be controversial with some people in this uh, playback. Go for I it. I want to take a second to just highlight how much I appreciate Chris Paul, which I never thought. Oh, my God. Been. Yes. Yes. Let's hear it. I hated the steady hand. The Chris Paul Lob City Clippers more than anybody. And the <laughs> only team I think I ever hated more was the Chris Paul and James Harden Houston Rockets. I absolutely hated him jawing at every referee with Doc Rivers behind him complaining about every call. And I've made a full 180 on this guy. Like, I know if you look at the box line, you're like, he scored eight points, but I was watching that game and every single shot he hit was like at a key moment where we like desperately needed a basket and he picks his spots. He truly does. Like he's like, ah, oh, shit, we need something right here. He hits a timely basket. He makes like little Draymond type plays where he'll like box out a guy for like an important rebound or I'll strip somebody. And honestly, this might seem ridiculous, but the play that really cinched it for me was against the Lakers. Do you guys remember there was like a breakaway fast break where LeBron was going to get like a dunk and Chris Paul ran and tried to foul him from behind? Like basically like a free <laughs> yes, safety trying to tackle him. And he's so old he couldn't <laughs> catch him. And he just fell right on his face. And I was like, honestly, greatest moment of the season. I was like, he was just straight up trying to tackle LeBron to stop him from getting a, a breakaway dunk. And I was like, there was another moment in that game where he's been so great at executing end of quarters, making sure we don't fuck it up like we did so much last year. And he hit a like mid-range jumper when Trace ran like to do a screen for him. And Trace came and gave the screen a couple seconds too early. And so he went for it and he hit a jumper with like four seconds left. And I could see him on the court telling Trace, like, you set that screen too early. Like now we gave them another p p possession. And I just keep watching Trace and Pods and all these guys in their rookie year, like, playing amazing. And I'm like, we have to give them credit. Like, I see him constantly talking to those guys. And, like, again, never thought I'd get there, but that's where I'm at with Chris Ball. That's all I wanted to say. That's a great call. And, and you know what? I have to agree with you. I have to agree with you the whole way. I'm gritting my teeth, but yes. I mean, look. Did the Warriors need a 5'11 point guard last offseason? Probably not. No. Yeah. Did they need a 39-year-old last mm. offseason? Mm. Probably not. But they did need a fucking adult. They did need someone yeah. who could absolutely stay, um, help the bench unit, solidify it. And you know Calm what? Calm the turnovers down. Guy's first ballot Hall of Famer. You know he wasn't happy to come here and be Steph's backup. And I know he started a decent amount, but like he is ultimately the backup point guard. Not a peep. Just the ultimate pro. So even if it's just one year, like you gotta appreciate it because just think about all the drama this year's produced. Like Wiggins, where are you mentally, physically, whatever it may be, right? Mm -hmm. Draymond. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't need to go down that road. Right. That's a different thing. Clay, I mean, Clay went through a lot of it this year where at yep. times I was like, this is really ugly to watch. He's like punching chairs, doing all that sort of thing. And Chris Paul was kind of that, the mature Kuminga. one of the whole. Yeah, exactly. Kuminga. I, I need to be playing more, yeah. Exactly. Chris Paul was, was missing maturity in that mix. So, you know. When you when you look at it, like I I get why people love him. I get why every team he's been on, people have been like, oh, he changed the culture here. Like just a pro, pros pro knows yeah. just makes guys better. Absolutely. And what I would say is for the holdouts who still don't like Chris Paul, yes, he he's been helpful this season. But whatever trade we're gonna do in the off season, his contract's gonna be like pivotal to that most likely so mm -hmm. i feel like chris ball will be the gift that keeps on giving hopefully in the off season so i i came to terms with this in the in the past off season here for all the uh the light years listeners here in playback and and on the pod here's here's how you process this 
the point is you root for the Warriors to win a title, and then you still get to say Chris Paul couldn't win without Steph. So you get to, <laughs> you get to still you still get to keep it's it. Win, it's a win win. Right. Yeah, it's 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 a great thing. Once once the Warriors won in 2022, no one can say shit to them. No sure. one can say you needed KD. I, nope. I see four. I see four one before for these you, dudes. one after you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't. LeBron can come here, and no one's gonna be like they needed LeBron to win. And uh, but in his case, it'd just be like you know, it's, it is what it is. They're both they're both made men on both sides. But it's like there's nothing you can really say about these guys in any other capacity. It's just about winning at this point. The narratives are dead. Get number one Chris Paul fan Geo up here and call it a night. All right. I'm so disgusted by this whole Chris Paul slip. I'm sorry. Chris Paul stinks. He sucks. I f- Chris Paul can go right in hell, bro. He's a horrible player, basketball player. Honestly. That's, that, honestly. I mean, just, 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 just disgusting. This is... No, wrong, wrong opinion. Go away. <laughs> wrong opinion. I'm sorry. Like I, I have some pride here, bro. I mean, calm. It's Chris Paul. Like, it's real. Anyways, like I was gonna say, bro. Okay, like how much would you guys will be willing to pay JK like next summer? Like, I think. Ooh, are you okay, talking about so this like, coming summer or the following one? Well, because like, okay, it, it's, well, the I mean, here, this like, is extension summer, but yes, yeah, but, what, his yeah, next like, contract. What are you willing to give him right now? Is that that's the cr- question? Yes, but also my point is like you didn't trade him because you thought he was like the future. So if you're not gonna pay him, like, then why then why is he on the team? Like, I, I, that, that's my question. Like, like Pascal is not here because of J.K. OG is not because of J.K. Like, if, 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 if they're gonna extend him this summer, like, why is he here? Which is which is like my point. Like, I think they will extend him, whether you like it or not. I, the, the real question. Well, to be fair, they could technically trade him before extension because t- extensions, early extensions, are always in like October. That's called the, called the Jordan Pool before the extension kicks in. Uh, yeah. No, 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 the opposite before you because yeah before you have to extend him. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, what do you think? What do you think J.K. is going to get? Because so I, I think this is really interesting because which is why I he's not a question, max guy. Do you mean this this summer or next summer? Because yes. The, this is when the extension next summer is when the the extension could you know could be negotiated. I think the Warriors probably say whatever it was in the back half of this season, we want to see it again. Um, like I think they're going to make him prove it again because they have the the hammer of restricted free agency. So you know he's not going to get away without. So you don't you don't think they're going to pull a pool? I don't. I don't think they extend him this summer. I think they are going to make JK prove it again. What do I think he's worth? Uh, I think he's worth around Draymond money, 400, 410. So Jaden McDaniels money. Because I'm just trying to think of guys who signed early extensions and Jaden McDaniels took a five-year deal. Which was I want to say one thirty. Well, also to be fair, the cap has gone up some since then, so maybe sure. a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I think I think four years, a hundred to one hundred and twenty is somewhere in there. We get into money. Yeah, but here's yeah, but here's my thing though, right? Like, because Slater was like saying that they're not tr- that they're trying to cut like cut cut money get under the apron, right? And like you can't really improve the team if you if you go under the tax. So like. Of course you can. If you don't, with with like with actually good players, like with like actually good players, like who, like who's like who's good that you can take. This is the most the bloated tag. payroll in the NBA. Like they they literally just. Yeah, I mean, look if you if the you the best just, way if for if this non guarantee CP three and then Clay makes what Clay makes half of what he makes now, then you're gonna have some exception money that you can play with. That the Warriors have not. I'm not even talking. Years. I'm not even talking about that. Like literally, find an actual star player versus max worth maxing, mm. and then you have Steph. You have a second star, and you can fill out your roster in a way that doesn't have you having the world's most expensive payroll with dudes who I don't want to say they're not worth it, but they're not worth it. 
<laughs> so I mean, you like can't Clay's, have the most Clay's, expensive Clay's, payroll Clay's, of all time and be the nine seed or the eight and, seed and, and be like it was worth it, right? Exactly. Like no one, no one looks at that and just like, well, we definitely got what we paid for. If that was the case, like Chris Paul, not a thirty million dollar player. Clay Thompson, love him to death, not a forty five million dollar player, and he will not be one next year, right? Um, Wiggins, maybe. The 27 million. I don't know. I mean, but again, my point is, my point is they have a lot of expensive depth instead of like, you can look at the Lakers and they have their own issues, but their max guys are max guys. And then it's a question of production from them. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's how most teams are constructed. They have a couple max guys and then you're hoping to be smart around that instead of like buying everything. Just, just if CP3 look and, and the Warriors could decide to bring CP3 back at a discount, they could decide to guarantee whatever portion of his contract they need for a trade. All of these things are possible. But if if you just let CP3 go and Clay makes half of what he makes now, which seems about fair, you've just cut 52, 55 million off of your payroll right there, which will give you access to team building avenues that the, the Warriors do not have at present. I just, I like, I understand Gio's question. I just don't believe a word of anything the team says. Like, there you go. I, I, mean, I, I that's my biggest fear, honestly, because you heard, because you heard, you, you heard uh, the, uh, the Glenn Taylor, like news, right? Like this, like today, right? Yeah, with, with a Rod. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Glenn's a clown. So, yes. Also All I'm true. saying is, like, if Towns is if Towns available, like, I don't know, bro, like, go go for it. Like, that's my take. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the move. Maybe that is the move. I, I just, yeah. Well, so Appreciate here's, the, you, wait, here's the problem with that, though, is right. that if they're going to trade him, it's going to be to dump salary, and the Warriors do not have the ability to take him on without giving back matching salary to the, uh, the team. Wolves. They can give them. They can give them a, a lot of expiring contracts, though. So you know, you're right. But what I'm saying is, this coming season is where the bill starts coming due for the Timberwolves. Sure, sure. So, did I do that? Is that my fault? Did I just did I just kick everyone off the stage? Oh, but we're, now we're here. Apologies, there. We back. I say we just wrap it right there. All so, right, Aaron. I always appreciate you. 